Hey guys, so it's another month and I suppose that means another Battle of the Browsers video. Uh, probably one of my more consistent series is on this channel. So over the past month I've only been using two browsers, Firefox and Chromium. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about them because to me, the more I use both of these browsers side by side, the more stark the differences become. One of the things I've noticed is that it's very easy just to pick a browser and then get used to its faults and get used to having to deal with the little quirks that it has and, and becoming very comfortable with that. So much to the point when you try and move to another browser, even if that browser is better, it will feel more clunky because you're just not as used to using it. Um, so I do try and use the browsers, not necessarily simultaneously, but alternatively. So that way I still get the juxtaposition of a shock in, in, in a change, but um, I still sort of understand, uh, you know, I can still compare the differences quite effectively. And I've been doing that quite lately. Um, and I've got to say, my opinions seem to be getting more and more conclusive by the month, but they also seem to change quite a lot. Um, so I'm currently using Firefox at the moment, but I have got to absolutely unequivocally say that it is not as good a browser as Chromium. And there are a few reasons behind that. Um, some of them, I think the biggest, the biggest difference between Firefox and Chromium right now is how they manage their browsing processes. And what I mean by that is every single tab in Chrome or Chromium is its own process. Whereas with Firefox, Firefox is just one big process with everything running inside it. Now, that's not necessarily 100% true because if you have two different profiles running, uh, then you'll have two different instances of Firefox. So if you're running a website that is particularly um, resource intensive or particularly uh, tends to crash a lot for whatever reason, um, or, or whatever you can tend you can you can put down a separate profile and and not have to worry about it affecting things on 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 your on your other profile. So, but it's certainly more clunky and it certainly doesn't feel particularly wonderful to use and it's a workaround. It's not like Chromium where it just does that as a matter of fact. Now, the counter to that that a lot of people bring up is that well Firefox uses substantially less memory than Chromium and that is very very true but that being said firefox doesn't use an insignificant amount of memory anyway like if saving memory was was top of your your list of objectives you'd have to use just a smaller browser that can't do as much stuff that's that's the trade-off that's a very direct trade-off that's all you can can really do and there are some pretty good smaller browsers down there uh, i wouldn't necessarily feel too comfortable using them on top of say my pc which is easily able to handle you know faster stuff but um, I certainly would consider using them to sort of revise revive an old PC although that being said now even some of the older machines that I work with are going to struggle to, to load up a lot of web pages because web pages are just so terribly designed these days I'm going to do a whole different video about how how web design is just gone to shit it was so much better it was so much better 20 years ago it really really was but anyway I digress so I've finally come to this, This the big differences so far, because Firefox have definitely been catching up to Chrome with things like stability and, 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 and all the other features that, that Chrome has, the ability to play YouTube videos on all the resolutions because it comes with the, uh, is it the new um, WebRTC um, protocol and all that kind of stuff. Um, sorry, I haven't got that written down in my notes right now, but you know what I mean, like you can play... Um, uh, YouTube streaming as well out of the box now Firefox can uh, because that's all done through HTML5 and it's done through the HTML5 that, that Mozilla have now implemented into Firefox. But that's not really what this video is about. What this video is about is about the actual choice. The choice to, to use Firefox or the choice to use Chromium or the choice to use any other browser. I'm just going to quickly touch on uh, Vivaldi before I, uh, before I go any further because people always bring it up as well. I rule out Vivaldi pretty early on. I have given it a try, and I am very impressed with it. It's a very good piece of kit, and I would really consider it much more uh, as a as a as a main browser of mine if it if it didn't have closed source components. And I'm perfectly willing to admit, yeah, like 90% of the source code for for Vivaldi browser is available openly because it is based on Chromium, as far as I'm aware. Sure, um, but if some if a program, it's it. Chromium is still 
sort of, in my opinion, sort of outranks it because Chromium, effectively, it Chromium is is my near perfect browser. If I'm completely honest, um, there are a few things that Firefox can do that Chromium can't. But I can, f- I, the, I'm more than happy with the workarounds. I'm more than happy with the 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 add-ons that you can have. And in fact. To even get Firefox up to the usability of Chromium, I still need to install like three different add-ons. So, so I I am going to say right here and now that Chromium is the is the better browser out of all three of them. It's even better than Vivaldi. I like the look of Vivaldi. It's cleaner and it is a little more suitable for power users. But um, again, like I those those features don't don't supersede um, that uh, that Chromium just works the way that I want it to. But Vivaldi is good as well. It's just that those closed source components, Vivaldi is not so much better than Chromium that those that I'll, I'll overlook those closed source components. So there are enough good open source browsers out there that I don't even have to start, you know, that, that, that I can sort of um, say that. And also when it comes to the, uh, you know, how much preference, how much weight I'm going to give the open source uh, element of my choice, it, when it comes to web browsers, it's going to be pretty high, to be honest. When it comes to something like games, that is pretty low. Like, I will play a proprietary game uh, in no small part because of just the nature of how it works, the nature of the software. I, I would rather, you know, I, I would rather support open source anything over closed source, whatever. But um, And I also support uh, developers to license software under whatever they want to license it as. I only ever believe in encouraging people to do uh, to, to, to open source their work. But... Um, so, so with games, because games are they're they're, they're not designed to interact with a, a large variety of of the you know of, of, of media. It's not designed to speak to the world. Whereas a web browser is, and there's a lot more security involved in web browsing, and there's a lot more options involved with web browsing. There's a lot of different things you can do with web browsing. Web browsing is to me probably one of the most important areas where. Um, open source, well, you know, one of the more important areas to to focus on using open source stuff. And when I say open source, I just mean the software where the source code is available, readily available, and that way it can be audited for security, it can be audited for transparency. And I would probably, you know, and, and like GPL is probably a license I would prefer, but I'm I'm more than happy with with Chromium's BSD license. You know, that's that's not something that that, that particularly steers me away. And then Mozilla's browser, Firefox, is released under the Mozilla public license, I think it's called, which is um, a, an, a quote-unquote evolution of the, the GPL, but it, I think it covers things like um, Mozilla's um, icons and intellectual property regarding its, its logos and, and whatnot. And I think that's, ha- that's generally the difference between the license. I could very well be wrong on that, and I'm sure I will be corrected down in the comments section below. And as with all of my videos slash audios, <laughs> I'm going to call it, um, yeah, always check the comments section because I do make at least one mistake a video and, and there will always be someone smarter than I down there to correct me. So anyway... The reason I've decided to choose Firefox over Chromium, or to decide to put my, shall we say, stock or my weight or my preference behind Firefox, is because of Mozilla and the fact that I like Mozilla as a company more than I like Google as a company. And this, again, becomes a little bit more complicated because Google, I dislike for a number of reasons. The top of the list, of course, is that they are just as disrespectful around privacy as Microsoft, and nearly as disrespectful. I think that Google give you at least a good number of options when it comes to um, being able to control the information that Google has on you and being able to delete the information that Google has on you. So I think Google have a number of options there. Um, but I think that they provide those options in the knowledge that most people are going to be ignorant to it and they don't you know, I, th- I think I think that it's a it's it's very much as a grey area. They prov- provide options in the knowledge that they know that most people aren't going to take them, and they sort of take advantage of that. Um, uh, but also, Google have come under fire a lot because they don't pay their taxes here in the UK, and I'm going to assume other places because Google's financial headquarters, I think, are in the Bahamas or somewhere quite far away. Um, Anyway, you're certainly far away from from the UK, and I and I think that it is in a tax haven. But anyway, they've come under fire because they've recently been paying zero percent tax, um, which which is again it's it's something that um, well to be honest, it's not put them in a great light, is it? Anyway, Google seem to be a company that, whereas they have done a lot of good, they've done a lot of good for the internet and the world. 
They really, really have. I mean, they've given us WebM, which is a fantastic codec for online video. I see it used all the time now. It's a little slower to encode with than some of the other codecs, but you know, it's nice to have like a reliable, developed um, video codec that's that's widely, uh, you know, that's, that's sort of widely watchable. And I think that's brilliant. Um, and Google brought us that. Google have brought us some amazing open sourced fonts. Fonts was always something that people knew that Linux was lacking and no one ever really had the motivation to actually just go out there and, and just do a whole bunch of amazing fonts. In no small part because asking a single designer or a small number of designers like Google put like decent money behind developing all these fonts, whereas a community effort it would a be a lot more difficult and b those people would probably want to prioritize to something that isn't as 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 cosmetic as fonts and there have been some pretty good fonts that have been available open source but google have just accelerated that as well um and not to mention chromium they didn't have to open source their browser although admittedly that's that could very well be the reason they've open sourced it is simply so that they could port it to a lot more device or have the have communities port their browser to a lot more devices which is obviously something google would quite like um but also because it, it, for them it works they get a free security audit from the community so why why wouldn't they want to to put their, their source code out there uh, and if they've got anything to hide then they'll just bundle it into the chrome browser just as a as a, a binary blob which is incredibly devious i guess and something which we although you know don't know pretty certain that they probably do i mean there is a reason for using chrome and it's probably not because their logos are incompatible with the bsd license but whatever anyway the question is i like mozilla as a company more than i like google as a company and i generally feel from the consensus of the comments that that is that's like that's that's the general feeling of the room but also the general feeling of the room is that chromium is a better browser than firefox so the way I see it is that this is a template of the good old debate of pragmatism versus ideology. Is it better to, to use a piece of software that works better or is it better to use a piece of software that's developed by a company that you prefer? Now, the reason I raise this is because when you're a consumer, you vote with your money in, in a lot of cases. And, and that's not always true. Um, uh, it's a very well-known problem in the United States that most of the United States is only ever covered by one communications company, uh, you know, AT&T or Verizon or whatever. And, 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 you know, the free market has not provided competition there when, when, it, when it's needed. But the open source software world works a little bit differently because you're not consuming and purchasing software in the same way. Me just using Mozilla's Firefox browser isn't really supporting Firefox directly. And I suppose I could use the Chromium browser because it's better, but just donate to the Firefox browser because I want to see it grow and I want to support it. But that to me just seems like a completely unconventional way of, of supporting open source projects. Surely um, I should be supporting projects that I am currently using. So it gets a little bit confusing. It gets a little bit, bit of a grey area in that department. So I suppose I want to turn this question over to you guys. I like Mozilla as a company more than I like Google. But I like Chromium more than I like Firefox. Do you guys feel the same way? And do you change your browser choice because of it? Or would you rather just use the best browser that you can get your hands on? Let me know down in the comments section below. I look very forward to hearing from you. For those of you that are interested, I got a little bit of an update for you regarding this channel and some of the logistics. First off is that the audio from this video is going to be posted on SoundCloud. I'm exploring the idea of doing more audio-y stuff. Uh, I did mention earlier in the year that um, I was thinking about doing a podcast. And after looking at it, I'm certainly going to be going ahead with it. However, if I'm going to do a podcast for this channel, like a supplementary podcast for this channel, uh, and I'm thinking maybe an hour long about various news stories and that kind of stuff, um, what I want to do is I want to do like a non-tech podcast to sort of get practicing in it. So I'm actually in the process of working on that. And then once that's up and running, then I'm going to start working on this channel. Because if I want to do something for this channel, I kind of want to get, get it right. Um, podcasting is incredibly difficult, m much more difficult than just doing these casual videos. Um, 
And I'm still working out people who I'm going to work with. If I'm going to work with anyone, it could very well be a solo podcast for all it's for, 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 um, cause it does actually like one of the biggest problems in podcasting is just like getting people together and making sure that other people are reliable and all that kind of stuff. And that's where the big headache in podcasting comes from. Um, so I'm still like working on all that kind of stuff. There are a lot of logistics, a lot of small jobs involved in podcasting, which I really hate doing small jobs. So, uh, like I say, I'm working on the, um, the logistics for that. Uh, if I do a supplementary podcast for this channel, it is going to be on that SoundCloud profile that I have linked to down in the description. So if you want to basically keep abreast of that, um, check out that link there, but I'll, I'll put an update on this channel once, once things are finalized. Thank you very much for watching. And that's about it from me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.